Let's welcome your moderator for this panel, Mr. Dan Roberts from KJR 95.7 FM. And not to embarrass him, but just a bit of trivia, he's actually the voice of Dilbert, too. Dan's a voice actor, so. Thank you. How are we doing? Day three of Comic-Con, and you're still standing. Well, technically, you're sitting, but. Wow. Uh, the, I just passed through the portal, and we found something in an archaeological dig here. So a couple of announcements. Paul McGillian has brought a couple of Stargate scripts here. And so at the end of our Q&A session, which you're also going to take part in, uh, they're going to auction off these scripts. They're going to sign them and auction them off, and it's going to go to Children's Hospital. So how cool is that? <laughs> so I'll get the ball rolling for a few minutes here, and then uh, we have some microphones, and we'd love to hear your questions for the cast. And here they are. Welcome from Stargate Atlantis, Mr. Paul McGillian. Yeah, we've got a little Tonight Show business going on here. <laughs> Make yourself comfortable. From uh, SG-1 and, let's say, uh, Jason X or Jason 10, we've got Lexa Doig. And from Stargate SG-1, and I think he's appeared in just about every Stargate uh, series, actually, Michael Shanks. It's like they're popping right out of your TV. Wow, I feel like I'm on a chat show. You I've are. I've never been on one. It's Craig Ferguson live. Thank you very much. So in uh, real life, two of you are married. Does everybody know that? I'll move so the husbands Which can get together. <laughs> M <laughs> Michael and I have been married for... Welcome to Seattle. <laughs> <laughs> well, since I brought it up, I guess, how did, so how did that happen? Y you weren't working on Andromeda, Lexa? Yes. W the first time you met. Were there sparks at that time? Were there? What? Were there? Yeah, me and Sorbo hit it off like a lot. What? <laughs> Ew. Yeah. I'd actually seen the show um, about um, three weeks before I was asked to guest star on it. And I was watching it and I saw her on it and I went, damn, she's hot. And about three weeks later, I was asked to do the show and I went, yeah. See, when I was told that he was cast to play Gabriel, I sort of looked him up on IMDb and, uh, and I read up a little bit and I thought he was the full-on Birkenstock wearing hippie sensitive new age guy. No, he's a redneck asshole. <laughs> <laughs> I was quite surprised. There's sparks now, isn't there? <laughs> and the episode was called Star Crossed, was it not? Yes. So that's, that's kind of fun. That's kind of a meet cute. Yeah, I, was it a meat cute? I told it's my dinosaur like it was joke. Meant to yeah, be, that's all I'm saying. I was getting at this prosthetic put on my arm, and I hear somebody telling this joke. Um, it's a really crappy joke, but they were telling it in the hallway, and um, I kept wondering. I found out later that it was her, and I kept wondering afterwards. I went, I wonder if she was kind of like hanging out there uh, for my benefit, uh, trying to check out uh, who the new guy was, kind of deal. Do you, you want to yeah. tell a joke? Do we have uh, many kids in the audience? Okay, I'll tell the joke. I'll it's tell the it's joke. really lame, so don't, I'm it's not trying to build lame. it up. I'm actually okay. trying to knock it down. Um, I know not all of you are from England, but y y y y'all know what wank means, right? Okay, how do you wank a dinosaur? <laughs> I don't know what just happened. I'm uncomfortable. <laughs> Now, uh, Paul, you were actually the first character through the portal on Stargate. Is that not correct? SG-1? Yes. I different from Atlantis, though. Different show. Different character, right? though, too, Yeah, right? different character, yes. I played uh, Ernest Littlefield, the first, first 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the first person to go through the Stargate. That's pretty cool. How does that make you feel? <laughs> feel great. <laughs> so when you were cast in Stargate Atlantis, did the producers come after you? Did they remember you from that, or is it completely coincidence? Well, you know, it's funny because uh, living in Vancouver, as you know, we have for a long time now. When I did, I did that episode. I think that was season. Was that season one of Stargate? Yeah. Yeah. Was it? Yeah. And then I, I had a lot of friends that did Stargate, but then they would kind of come on to Stargate again as different characters, like sometimes like four times. And I said to my agent, I go, how come I can't come back onto the show? And then I got cast in Atlantis, and I said to Martin Wood, I said, I just didn't think, you know, I couldn't come back on the show. He goes, well, you you played Ernest. You're the first person to go through. And he goes, the fans, you know, they would know that. I'm like, what are you talking about? He goes, have you been to a convention yet? And I didn't know. And he goes, oh, you'll see. <laughs> <laughs> and I did. <laughs> and I do. <laughs> Uh, two of you, at least, I don't know about you, Lexa, have you died on Stargate? No. So the two I'm of you, though, waiting. have died at least once. You've died several times. <laughs> and Did on her show, too. Um, not Atlantis, though. Did you get worried at some point that the writers are out to get you? or? Oh, I know they are. That's not, I'm not worried about Wait it. Wait a minute. I, I you died twice on Andromeda. Yeah, I did. Yep. You appeared twice and died twice. Yep, and I think you killed me both times. Wasn't I that did. the case? I did. Three I times did. lucky. Must be love. <laughs> Do you have a favorite way to die? Do you have a favorite death scene? Do I have a favorite death scene? Oh, boy, that's a toughie. That's, there's so many good ways to go. I you mean, were tortured. I've been blown up and shot and executed. and. Uh, have you had an exploding tumor? <laughs> No, I haven't. I haven't. There you have it. There it is. Now, you died, uh, and they brought you back. Now, that wasn't always the intent, correct? There was kind of a response from the fans. They wanted you back. Is that true? Well, I think because of the fans. That's why they brought me back. Thank you. And you, you made a thank you video that I saw on YouTube, and you received all kinds of uh, goodies from fans. What did they send you? Uh, scotch and chocolates. <laughs> and? Pardon me? Did they send you turtles? I heard something about I've turtles. Go, Is I've that got for real? Many, many wee baby turtles. Many of them. <laughs> I, I, I bring them back, and my, my wife, you know, she didn't really watch the episodes this before we met, and she was, what's with all the turtles in the place? So I have, like, a anything is a turtle, you know, that I have. Like, I it's amazing what people can make into turtles. So, yeah, I have a lot of turtles. That's amazing. All right, um, Lexa. <laughs> it is pretty amazing. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm still stuck on it's amazing what it's people can make into <laughs> that's turtles. My, that's my wheels are turning. Uh, stall. Anyway, uh, did you all, like, were you in love with the sci-fi genre prior to becoming such a big part of uh, all these shows in that genre? Were you a fan of sci-fi and comic books prior to becoming an actress and landing these roles? Um, yeah, I mean, kind of. I, uh, uh, my dad and brother are geeks. And so I aspire to geekdom, don't quite hit it, so I'll settle for dorkdom. Um, <laughs> and uh, I grew up watching Star Trek and, and Battlestar and, you know, all that sort of stuff. My brother reading Larry Niven, Ringworld, all that sort of, you know, I, I was around it a lot and, and, and had a great love for it. And I love the, um, the allegorical ability that, that you get with sci-fi. Yes, I said a big word, by the way. Allegorical. Yeah. I, I stopped listening you. as soon as you started talking. So you stopped good. listening about seven years ago. Shut up. Um, I tuned out after turtles. <laughs> turtles, 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 turtles. Uh, but so, yeah, short answer, yeah. I hate you both. Can I just tell you that right now? <laughs> Michael, is it true Grumpy that cat. you uh, were on the set of MacGyver watching Richard Dean Anderson film and that kind of inspired you? I wouldn't, uh, yeah, that's a, uh, yes and no. I mean, what happened was I'd, I was, I'd acted all my life, but I, I'd come to um, Vancouver. I was gonna go into um, the business program at the university and I was there to audition for a play that my former uni or college professor had submitted me for, unbeknownst to me. So I had gone to Vancouver um, before even school even started for the first time to audition for this this play at the university, and I got there early, so I had some time to kill. Went down to Jericho Beach, which is really close by, and they were filming MacGyver down there. Um, str strangely enough, Dan Shea was there also. I didn't know him at the time, because uh, he remembers everything way more vividly than Richard Dean Anderson does. 
Um, and I was watching, and it was the first time I'd been live on a set watching a TV show get made, and I was quite fascinated, not only by the process, but by the fact that it was now shooting, the shows that were beginning to shoot in Vancouver, and that maybe this was a possibility to go into professionally for me. So that was more what it was. I mean, I think I was always interested in doing it, but there was my acknowledgement that there was an industry that was really burgeoning in Vancouver, and the, the fact that I could be part of that now was uh, the new information at that point. Was it kind of surreal to then land a job where you're acting opposite Richard Dean Anderson? It was. I mean, Rick didn't show up till the very end of when I was there doing it. He showed up in this Dodge Viper, looking every bit the sort of TV star, had the sunglasses on, looking out at the sunset, sitting on his, the hood of his Viper kind of deal. I was like, that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> and um, what was a really funny is that the, the second set that, was, um, that I watched, or the second um, crew that was up I at the university filming later on that year was actually 21 Jump Street. And the director of that particular episode was Peter DeLuise. So putting the, the two of them together, the first two sets were these guys, um, other shows, and the fact that they, we all ended up working together on Stargate, that was quite kind of, that was very interesting. That was, that was quite apropos, I thought. So we've got 17 seasons of this show, three different versions of the show, a couple of movies, and now kind of, uh, is it, it's on pause, sort of? I mean, do you, do you think that there's, a, it just seems like it's been going on for so long, people clearly love it. Something's going to happen, happen with it in the future, right? I mean, it has to. Well, there's money to be made, if nothing else. Sure, and that's ob obviously that's the bottom line. Um, I do know that MGM, off after all their restructuring, and they've got a, a few loose pennies in their pockets now, thanks to The Hobbit and thanks to the latest James Bond, uh, movie that th the one of the things that they did I don't know if you guys are aware of the uh, the app game that's come out um, Stargate Unleashed which myself Chris Amanda and Richard all did the voices for um, uh, separately of course but um, it's it's gonna be coming out I think I just got a tweet from the guy that created it. it's 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 now into Apple and it's going through um, some last-minute tests and it should be out in the, within the next month the full version of the game so if you haven't uh, gotten a look at the, the trailer for it and whatnot, check it out. We did all did the voices. It's kind of like an episode of, of Stargate or a, a very long episode of Stargate w mi intermixed with gameplay and whatnot. And I have talked to that guy and MGM is kind of firing up the furnace again for possibly doing more with that franchise. I mean, licensing is one part of the equation. Actually putting money towards other things is something else. So there's, there's ideas that are burgeoning, but I have no idea what they might be or where that may sit at the end of the day. So... It, it might be a long way off, or it might not include us at all. I don't know what's going to happen with it. But I do know that the, some version of Stargate will probably begin again. Right? That's good news, right? <laughs> I want to go ahead and, and get some uh, questions from you. So don't be shy. This is, you know, this is a great opportunity. So hop up to the mic while we're waiting. Uh, what, what were the sets like as far as uh, m mood? Were there any pranks on set? Any funny stories no, you remember? Nothing. No, <laughs> that's not what I heard actually. Uh, yeah, it was great. Our, uh, Atlantis looks like a nightclub. You know, it was a lot of fun, and you know, Rainbow uh, Ten Franks always wanted to be the DJ of the nightclub. So, the, you know, that was that was something that that he did. Uh, a lot of Jason Momoa. We had a lot of fun. You know, Joe Flanagan teasing him about his hair product, you know, that kind of thing. <laughs> what was the story I heard about? Uh, you were running around in a backpack, and it kept getting heavier for some reason. Is that a true story? Or yeah, that that's a true story. <laughs> yeah, Joe Flanagan, um, still haven't got him back, but he, uh, uh, Dave and I were carrying this huge uh, background performer that Joe planted in the scene in, in, a, in a crazy, like, makeshift cot, and uh, it was really hot in the forest, and Joe kept on putting, uh, in between breaks, putting rocks in my backpack, so by the end of the day, I had, like, 50 pounds of boulders in my backpack. And, and you were unaware. I was pouring sweat. No, I just thought because the guy was so heavy, I was just sweating. But, and then he left. He, he flew down to L.A. and he left a little note for me saying, just probably check out your backpack. That's awesome. sweat there. Yeah, it was great. We have a question from the audience. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great story, though. Is it on? Okay. Hi, my name is Alyssa. I have a question for Paul. Um, so when you filmed the dog's breakfast, a, a dog's breakfast with Nathan, or, yeah, no. <laughs> David Hewlett. David Hewlett, sorry. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm kind of starstruck right now. Um, what was the funniest story about filming that movie? Because that movie was absolutely hilarious, and I assume there has to be some sort of fun stories going on behind the scenes. Yeah, uh, you know, I'll tell you the funny, the, well, you know, I, my, I don't know if you've seen the movie or not, but I, I play like three different characters, one of them being a woman, sort of. Um, <laughs> yeah. Not a very attractive one. 
Uh, I but I'm in drag. Cute. And David and I, it's pouring rain in Vancouver, very similar to Seattle weather. And we're out in the mud, and David, there's a scene where David has jumped out the window, and my character, the female detective, is standing above him and catch him. But David's naked, <laughs> lying on the, mud, on the mud, and he has soap suds on his bum. <laughs> so the, the camera runs out of batteries, so I have to have an umbrella holding it over so the soap suds don't dissipate, and we see even more than we don't <laughs> want to. And uh, so I'm standing there li like this, we're holding this umbrella, waiting for the other guy to come, and I'm, I'm in a dress, you know. <laughs> And I have the high heels like this, and I look at Hewlett, and uh, he's looking up. He can't get up because he's naked. <laughs> Thankfully, he doesn't get up. Um, and I look down at him, and I go, this better be funny. He goes, I know, right? And then my heels just sink into the mud. <laughs> <laughs> like that. That well, th happened. Thank you so much. <laughs> You're one of my favorite characters on Stargate. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Thanks for the question. We have another question right here. Hi. I, um, I have a question for pretty much everyone. Um, being involved with the whole sci-fi industry, um, what was your guys' take on SGU? I know it gets a lot of mixed reviews from different fans. I personally loved SGU. Um, Robert Carlyle's performance was fantastic. Um, what did, how, did, how did you guys feel about that? Uh, I enjoyed the show. Um, the problem was, uh, and this is kind of, I guess it's part and parcel with how people felt about it, when they had myself or Rick come on and, and guest star on it, because the tone was so starkly different, um, yes. we kind of felt like we didn't belong there. <laughs> I remember one time, um, when, when, like for example, the, 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 there's one scene that Rick and I appear together in his office at one point in, in one of the episodes in the latter part of the uh, first season. And, um, uh, and of course, Rick and I get up to our shenanigans, making up our own lines and blah, 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 and going our way through the scene. And I remember Louis was quite enjoying it. Louis Ferrer is quite a gregarious fun chap but he was sort of going I feel like I'm just guest starring on your guys show or something man and um, when you watch the finished cut of that scene none of the stuff that we did was kept because it kind of didn't fit it used it fit into our show because we kind of made it fit into our show but for their show it's a very different tone and and so with that in mind um, I think on its own if you if you had to just are able to completely remove it from the rest of the Stargate universe so to speak pardon the pun <laughs> Um, it's a very good show. It's very, it's very well shot. It's very well directed. It's very well acted. It's, you know, uh, Carlisle's of course wonderful. Louis Ferrer is wonderful in it, and um, I think that the guys did their best jobs. And it was, it was the most money that was put into any one of the Stargate franchises. So it, it, on its own, it deserves a lot of accolades. The problem was for for our audience, I don't think that it fit what they were expecting or what they'd come to sort of embrace about the show. And and I think a lot of people felt on some level that it was uh, a ripoff of Battlestar Galactica. That was an air tone. What are you doing? This is not my Stargate kind of deal. So it's, uh, I enjoyed it and I enjoyed being on it. I enjoyed the people. I think it deserves a, s a separate category of mention. So, but um, I understand people's feelings coming from, it just wasn't the same tone as the rest of the shows. Thank you guys. Thanks. Pittsburgh Steelers. <laughs> I get a lot of grief for wearing this shirt, especially <laughs> in this town. Uh, I'm um, a Dallas Cowboys fan, so trust me, I, I can, you know, I, I know, you. sorry. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's, it's gone dark all of a sudden. But well, I did, I was rooting for Seattle in the playoffs. This goes back to a certain Super Bowl, which the Seahawks fans will not talk about too often. Um, this question is for Michael. What was it like working with Claudia Black? <laughs> Are you going to do this right now? Sorry, Alexa, just having convulsions on the couch. I have allergies. You really have to wait till this is over. This is hilarious. I, okay. I have allergies. Let's count. Let's count. Good after about three or four. Okay, maybe not. That was the weird. That was the weird. That was the weirdest sneeze I've ever. Did you guys see that? It was like. <laughs> <laughs> it's like. Do you rather like, me spray snot? It's like, it's across like guinea the pig stage? sneezes. She might be allergic to something. I don't him. know. I'm allergic to it's him. It's Michael. <laughs> him. You good? I'm not, gonna, not gonna break it into hives or anything, are you? I, I apologize on her behalf, please. <laughs> Uh, yes, uh, Claudia Black was uh, was fantastic. She was uh, Claudia Black's a lot of fun. She's a lot of energy. She brings a lot of uh, great new ideas to the table and is game for for just about anything. And she's somebody that if you give her the scene, you have to try and keep up with her. And if she hands it to you, you have to try and you know do a lot of stick handling because she'll uh, she'll make you look bad at the end of the day, even though you're it's supposed to be your scene. So um, she was she was great. She was. Um, 
you know, she was she reinvigorated my my love for for not just the show at a certain point, but but even acting in general because she was just had so much energy and so many fresh ideas and 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 had so much love for it herself. Um, so uh, she was great. I loved her. I adore her. Thanks. Thank you. Go ahead. Howdy, guys. Um, so last year, uh, Chris Judge was sitting where you guys are right now, and I had the opportunity. Yeah. I had the opportunity to ask him this question. I'd like to see your guys' uh, thoughts on this as well. So my favorite episode of all three series was uh, Window of Opportunity, <laughs> where, uh, where, where Teal'c and, uh, and, and, and the Colonel get caught in that time loop and they keep going back and forth. And you know, there's, sh there's shenanigans and it's great. Uh, so for Michael specifically, um, I'd like to know what your favorite part of that particular episode was. And then for all three of you, I, just for the entire series, I'd like to know what your favorite episode, either as, as an actor or as, as a fan, is. I unfortunately, because um, Daniel had to kind of be the straight man in that scenario, I unfortunately didn't get to participate in any of the shenaniganery that... Uh, <laughs> Uh, Rick and Chris did. They got to do, you know, and a lot of the stuff was made up, like the, the, the juggling the golf balls and all that stuff, the <laughs> riding the bike down the hallway, the pottery, the even the, the, the golf scene. And all. None of that was originally scripted. It's the blessing that happens, um, and it was actually a, it turns out to be way better than most people would, would think at the time, is when an episode runs short, meaning we've shot everything, we put it all in the edit room, and we're still like three minutes short of our 44-minute delivery time, they go, oh crap, we have to make some stuff up. So they did this great montage of all this stuff happening. And it was funnier than the rest of the episode. So, <laughs> you know, we, we call those, uh, you know, happy accidents that happen. Um, but I didn't get to participate. I had to bear witness to it and keep a, you know, stiff upper lip as the boys juggled and ruined all my carefully thought out exposition. So do I have a favorite part of it? Um, yeah, when it was over. <laughs> and what was your favorite episode? Was my of what the of, whole thing? Of the, of the whole all thing. All three series. Oh, good God, man! <laughs> Paul, wh which episode do you die in? <laughs> uh, I, I died in wow. duet when David kissed me. <laughs> <laughs> and I died just a little bit inside. No, I think uh, my my favorite episode to watch anyway was probably the Heroes two-parter in season seven, just because. It was very, uh, it was very, uh, it was very, still Stargate, but it was still very grown up, and it, it brought a different layer to the series. We had, you know, it, 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 the series itself had become, the action and stuff of it had become kind of cartoony in a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of ways. And this kind of brought it back home to making it really about what it was to be, you know, risking your life as part of the military made it real again, and, and especially losing a character like Janet, would ma which made it very poignant. Um, uh, brought out a lot in all of the characters that we hadn't seen before. So I thought it was one of our more sort of grown-up episodes and more, you know, what, what, what I think Universe sort of became um, at its core was all about bringing that gritty reality to the show. And that was our first crack at it, and I thought it, it did very well. Uh, for me, um, it's a great, great episode, by the way. You I never, never saw, saw that. it. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, you know, I, I think uh, Poison in the Well was uh, one that was really, for me, it was really cool. To, I think that kind of solidified Beckett as a regular, but also um, Irresistible, uh, ir because we were all so different in it. You know, all the characters were very different, especially for Tori to watch that and, you know, my character and stuff. That was, that was a very fun episode. And Richard Kind, I thought, was great in that episode, too. Um, I was going to say Heroes Part 1 and 2, but on second thought, because he said it, uh, what was the episode that Michael died in? What's that? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Okay, that Which one? one? I can't hear you. That one. I can watch that All of every them. day. <laughs> yeah. She has that on a loop in the living room. Yeah. It's <laughs> awesome. Is, is that Alexis Cruz over there? Is he ever question? Is he being a little dick? Yeah. Is that Alexis Cruz? Is he being a little prick? Is that so Alexis? The, 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 the young. <laughs> look, Hi. Alexis, I Alexis just, Cruz. I just want to know how you felt about working with that hack from the movie. <laughs> I know we're not supposed to allow anybody to come up on stage, but I really want to give Alexis a hug because I haven't seen him in a long time. Go ahead. Okay, I'll go down. <laughs> Alexis Cruz, everybody! Love it. 
Love it. This is what's called a panel I get no love ball. Here we go. <laughs> I didn't even know you were here till like like twenty minutes ago. I'm a ninja, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Alexis Wait. is promoting here uh, his new book called The Unprofessionals, right? Yeah, yeah. Which could be us, but yeah. you know. Uh, yeah, The Unprofessionals: A Sociopathic Bromance. It's my new graphic novel I co-created with my best friend. Uh, we put our hearts into it, so I guess uh, uh, it, it, everything that you. If, if you do like my work, <laughs> everything that you've ever liked about it, we really poured it into this book. Um, it's not sci-fi, it's a crime story, but I think you guys are awesome enough that you'll get it, you know? Uh, I'm at V05 in Artist Alley. Come by and say hello. I don't want to monopolize their time, it's their panel. Um, <laughs> but I want to say hi to you guys and hi to Love you guys. It. Love it. Oh, Alexis Cruz. <laughs> what was it like to work with Alexis Cruz? <laughs> Who? They made a good sound. <laughs> it's your hollow head. It's, it, Alexis, as you can tell, is awesome, and he was always great to work with. And whatever happened to Scar, he like ascended or some shit, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, and, but they just left me up there. Yeah, yeah. You, they just they, they kicked out of heaven. So yeah, yeah, I know. Cause no kidding, I'm <laughs> badass. <laughs> Yes, so the young lady at the Somebody please save us. Hello. Uh, my name is Sheen, and I absolutely love Stargate. All of the um, series were wonderful, and I love Skara and Michael and Lexa and Paul. But the question I have is for Paul. My best friend, Tegan, couldn't be here today, and she really wanted to ask you a question. She's going to Edinburgh, Scotland. She would like to know if you have any suggestions for food and music. Uh, Jesus, yeah. <laughs> well, we're, we're, we're recording this right now, so if you have, just lay it out for her and, and we'll give it to her. Uh, just every, every, Edinburgh's such a great place. She has to go to the castle, of, of course, which is amazing. And when she goes to the Crown Jewels, there's a little sign there. It says, the Lineage of Scotland. And it says, McAlpine. My mom's maiden name is McAlpine. First king of Scotland, Kenneth McAlpine. So basically, um, I'm royalty. <laughs> 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 or that, that's what my mom says. She goes, we, we come from a royal bloodline, you know that, right? I mean, okay, of course. Okay, yeah, but what does your wife say? My wife, uh, I don't know what she says. Sometimes it depends, but she, she loves me. <laughs> What's that like? Sweetheart. <laughs> you know what Sweet. my wife says? <laughs> Just a sweet couple. Adorable. <laughs> Tell her to have a great time though. There's all kinds, she's gonna love it. it go, just go everywhere. Okay. You can walk everywhere. That's what's so great about Edinburgh. Wonderful. So Thank you, sir. You're very much. And we'll take a question over here. Hi. Um, I just wanted to show you this Stargate that I crocheted at one point. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, <laughs> Where does it lead? That is amazing. It uh, probably leads to a box of yarn. <laughs> Do you have a boyfriend? I have a girlfriend, actually. You have a girlfriend? Yes. God, you're sexy. That makes you even sexier. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I also got to ask this question of Chris Judge last year, and I was wondering, since you've all been in multiple seasons of Stargate, and it's such a big commitment and part of your life, I wonder if it's embedded itself into your psyche enough that you've ever had a dream about it. <laughs> Relax, mine were about Paul. <laughs> mine too. <laughs> the sexy oh, yeah. beast. <laughs> yes. It's a yes or no question. <laughs> yes is the answer. <laughs> Do you guys have any planets or places from the show that if you, know, if you could step through a Stargate, you'd want to go there? The one with all the Swedish models? <laughs> that planet. That was the dream, Paul. That was, that was the dream. <laughs> It's a fantasy. <laughs> What's the Knox home planet? They've got, they've got cool it's, hair. 
it's called Capilano, and it rains every day. Um, one of my favorite things about Stargate is that even with all the explosions and violence and everything, it more than op more often than not problems are solved with brains over brawn. Um, I mean, you got Daniel who figures it out in the first place, and then you've got characters like Beckett and McKay and Eli and a plethora of others. Um, what are your thoughts on that? And also, what effect, if any, do you think Stargate has had on television, particularly genre television, in regards to pushing beyond the stereotype of the typical geek? Well, I think I mean you know it, it makes you know the geeks are, are the heroes of the show you know in a lot of ways uh, I think and the good thing about for me for Stargate is the show as comedic as it can be and dramatic at times it has a lot of humanity and I think and the families can watch it like you know a lot of families come to these conventions and they've said we grew up watching the show together as a family and I think that's rare right nowadays and so it's a real I think it falls in the footsteps of the original Star Trek like that you know. And I think that that's a great thing to have. And I think a lot of families grew up watching that and it, it was a bonding moment for them. So I think that's really cool. I, I think also the, the beautiful thing about it is that it takes the label off of geekness and turns it into something that is uh, positively normal. And not only normal, but necessary, say, for the survival of our world, for our exploration. And so I, part of the, the wonderful thing about the, the relationship that that we all have together with Stargate is that it brings the entire science fiction genre to something relative to you guys. You know, you, it, we are you guys in space. <laughs> and, and that's pretty unique to, to, to our show. That's very unique. Thank you. I, I think, I think um, one of the things that, that uh, in the early days of Stargate, I, because it, I don't know why this was, but it was probably the easiest thing to do. Is they, they tried to, especially with Daniel, they tried to have so many jokes at his expense. Mm. And um, <laughs> this is so easy. I know it was. This is the thing. <laughs> and um, uh, what I tried to, to, to what I tried to, to get through to them in the early days too, and what what um, hopefully came across, especially as the, the series wound on, was the integrity and strength that it was for that character to take those blows literally and yeah. figuratively and not lash out, that there was strength in that. that. There was strength in taking a punch and not fighting back as much as there was to be a big, tough warrior. That there was um, an, a noble and an honor and an integrity to that, and that was something that was important in, in the core of the character, and not just to be the comic relief that they were, I think, seeking early on in the show. Thank you. We've got time for a couple more questions, and then we're going to auction off some Stargate scripts. Hi, you guys. Um, I've been to the Vancouver convention that unfortunately no longer is happening. So I just want to tell you guys, thanks for coming here. And please tell all of the other actors that this is a great place to be <laughs> so that they'll start coming. <laughs> um, and I have two questions, kind of one for Alexa and Paul and then one for Michael. Um, so Alexa and Paul, could you tell us a little bit about what you guys are working on next and like what we can expect to see you guys in uh, coming up soon? And then uh, Michael, I was wondering, how do you feel about the fact that when Amanda goes up to heaven and uh, is supernatural, she actually gets pretty real power, and you had to spend all that time not getting to do much? Are you jealous? <laughs> I, I haven't seen Amanda on the show. Is, is, is her episodes air, aired on Supernatural? Is she? Yeah, yeah, she's fantastic. So she's like all powerful and crap? Damn! Uh, <laughs> Um, I'm going to file a complaint. <laughs> With God. Okay, just checking. Um, right now I'm doing a show on uh, uh, showcase in Canada and sci-fi in the States called Continuum. <laughs> which is <laughs> um, uh, a really cool show. And I can't, unfortunately, talk about it because it's so heavily reliant upon the twists and turns and everything that goes on it. But uh, we have just started shooting the second season. We're like four or five, four episodes in. Uh, I go back to work tomorrow. It's so cool. There's a lot of faces that you would uh, recognize from Stargate, like Tony Amendola and Mike Dokud and Terry Chen. And, um, so by all means, tune in. It's awesome. And I kind of, it looks like I'm playing a bad guy, but I want to say, <laughs> one man's terrorist is another man's freedom fighter. It's not that simple. And season two starts airing, I think, uh, April 21st. So tune in. It's awesome. <laughs> Very, yeah, it's very, very cool show. I want to be on the show with her. 
I want you to be on the show with me too. I hope, hopefully that'll happen. Come, we'll see what come join the dark side. Join Liberate. I'm I'm, I will. Sir, that's, my, that's my guy. That gets scared though. <laughs> Don't be scared. I know. Um, a recurring Once Upon a Time show on ABC, and then uh, <laughs> and then a uh, new show on CW called The Cult. I <laughs> pop in that's at the end. Terrell's on that too, isn't Pardon? she? Terrell Rothery. Yeah, Terrell. Yeah, Terrell's. Terrell comes in the same act, same episode. I come in at towards the end of the season, and if it gets picked up, we'll see what happens with the with the character. And if you're up, anybody's up in Vancouver next weekend, there's a movie called Hit and Strum that's opening up the Fifth Avenue Cinemas that uh, Michelle Harrison's in with herself and Kurt Cowett. Really a uh, cool little indie flick. So check that out if you get a chance. Great, thank you guys, and hopefully Kai, you guys come back again another year. Thanks for having us. Thank you. I hate to say it, but final question, and then we're going to auction off some Stargate scripts that they'll autograph for the winners. Um, oh, first Thank bless you. you. I'm allergic to him. It's and bless fault. you. I know how that feels. I'm married too. Um, <laughs> um, really quick comment. Um, I saw the like some pictures from the the uh, Women of Sci-Fi calendar that was done. That um, they were absolutely wonderful, and I think that we need a Men of Sci-Fi calendar just to say um you three would definitely be awesome in a calendar just for the men that are up there um but as long as, long as they can take me and superimpose jason momoa's body yeah. <laughs> that would be good i'll I keep the dreadlocks though um and then i also i had a quick andromeda question for lexa um in the fifth season there is a moment um where the kind of the three badass chicks are kind of surrounded by the bad guys and uh, Rami gets one of the best lines um, just in general uh, and says, these are not the droids you're looking for. And I fully ad-libbed that. Okay. That was not I scripted. I just wanted to ask And it was a whole thing because I originally said, these are not the droids you're looking for, and we had to change the line uh. um, to, we are not the droids you're looking for, specifically so that we didn't get in any trouble. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I, I just also like that little shout out. So that was really cool. Yeah, that's because I'm a little bit of a geek myself. And I, it was amazing how many people on set didn't actually understand the reference. I was very disappointed. <laughs> but it was Randy also Ledford fully got it. I just want to point that out. But the number of people that didn't quite get that reference. Really? Yeah, they didn't. I was like, I sat there. I, who was directing that? Was that Martin? Yeah, Martin was it. No, Martin got it. I can't remember. But yeah, the whole thing with the you're not the droids you're looking for. They didn't get it. They're like, I don't understand why you want to do that. And I'm like, ah, duh, Star Wars. <laughs> Come on. But it was just nice to see a you know, beautiful woman actually saying the line. <laughs> so. Why, well, thanks. <laughs> so thank you. Thank you. All right, I'm going to turn it over to our auctioneer, Paul McGillian here. Um, that's right. Michael and uh, Lex have said they'd help out, and maybe Alex will sign these two for us. Um, let's go for uh, the BC Children's Hospital. We should, I'm just going to do a couple scripts. Um, and These are my scripts from Atlantis. We'll all sign them and uh, yeah, do some bidding for those. Claire, who's my assistant, she's out there. She'll mark your name down if you happen to get it, and then you can come over to the table after this, and uh, I'll sign it, personalize it for you, and we'll deal with the, the payment over there for it, okay? Um, so you're going to have to help me maybe just seeing because I can't see who is. You know, so just uh, scream out or put your hands up. If you're interested in the scripts, come a little closer so we can see you. This is a coup d'etat. It's got everybody, all the main cast in it. Um, it's a working script from Atlantis. I think it was season written by Martin Garrow. Um, and we'll start the bidding out after this at $100 US for this. Where is it? Oh, over there. I saw a hand. Got it. You guys, okay. We'll go uh, 100. Let's go 120. 120. 150, 150, got it, okay, 180, here, 200, yeah, 200 over there, 220, I'll do it with the Scottish accents better, 220, <laughs> right there, Two, 240, right there, 260, 280, 300, right there, 320, 400 right there, 400. Whoa, nice. That's good. For the babies, 420. <laughs> 450. Do I have 450? 450 right there. Do I have 500? 450 going once. 500 right here. 460. We're not going up by tens. Stop it for God's sakes. Do I have 500? 500. Thank you very much. 
Do I have 550? 550. 550 going once. 600 right there. I'm getting turned on. 600. Do I have 650? 600 going once. Twice. Sold. Very nice. Woo! Claire. You want to do one? All right. This is The Tower, one of my favorites. What the hell was this about? <laughs> Written by Joe, Joe Malazzi and Paul Mully. Let's start at 100. Why not? Because uh, 100 right there. Do I have 150? 150, 150, 150 right here. Do I have 200? 200, 200, 200, 200, 200, 200 over there. Do I have 250? 250, 250. Do I have 300? Do I have 300? Do I have 350? 400? I got 350. I got 400. Do I have 450? Do I have 450? 450 right here. Do I have 500? 500, 500 right there. Do I have 550? 550. 550, 500 going once. 550 right there. Do I have 600? Do I have 600, 600, 600? <laughs> right there, 600. Do I have 650? We're going to break the bank on this one. 650. I got 600 going once. I've got 600 going twice. 600. 650 right That's why I did it slow. 650 right here. Do I have... 700, 700, 700, 650 over here. I got 650 over here. Do I have 700? 700 for Beautiful the Tower. It even has, what the hell is this? Is this mustard on here? Is this, <laughs> this is, this is, um. It's yeah, that's highlighter, that, nincompoop. Come on. I, 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 I don't know. That's mustard from 2007. <laughs> <laughs> I've got, I've got mustard and a highlighter on here. I've got 650 here. Do I have 700? 700. I got 650 going once. 650 going twice. Sold for 650. Very nice. Okay. That's great. So just uh, if if you win, Claire will come over to you, get your name, come and see me at the table. We'll do it. This is Critical Mass. It's a really cool episode. Um, Got all kinds of neat guest stars. Oh, yeah. Mitch Pelegi is in this episode. Bo Bridges is in this episode. Bill Dow, Ellie Harvey, Peter Fleming, Jason Momoa. I choked him out in a wrestling match. Uh, Joe Flanagan. Hi, Joe Flanagan. Um, David Hewlett, um, Paul McGillian. Sexy, sexy man. And uh, you know, uh, we'll, let's just start. The, let's jump right up here. Let's start the bidding off at this one at 300. Do I have 300 for the critical mass? Right there. Yeah. Do uh, 350. 300. 350 right there. Thank you, love. Do we have 400? 400. We have 400 in it. Do we have 450? 450. Do we have 500? We have 500? Very nice. Do we have 550? Look at, look at it. We have 550. Do we have 600? 600 there? No. 550 going once for the babies. <laughs> for the wee babies. <laughs> They're like baby turtles, but different. <laughs> 550 going once, going twice. Do I have 600? Sold right there, 550. Yay. Very nice. That's good. Okay. We'll leave it at that, maybe? Yeah. That's great. I think we're just going to leave it at that. If you're interested in anything else, I have a couple things here. You can come to my table, and I'll show you them, okay? But uh, thank you very much. Give a round of applause. It's very generous of you guys. Fantastic. Thanks, thanks guys. Thanks for coming out today. And thanks to our uh, surprise guest, Alexis, Mike, Lexa, and Paul, the cast of Stargate. Yeah. You're, do you guys have photos and signing this afternoon? We're, we're signing right now. So they're going to go sign things. If you uh, want to chat thanks, with guys. them, have anything autographed, that's your turn. And remember, I'm at Artist's Alley with my book, V05. Come have a chat. Chris Sarandon, coming up from Fright Night, Princess Bride, Nightmare Before Christmas. It's going to be fun. It's a choice to be